sometimes we are interested in finding out whether there's a correlation between two different variables, some sort of an association between the two variables that would allow us to make a model of the way that the variables are acting and then use that model to make predictions. This segment talks about a linear model that we might be able to um, make between two variables and specifically an idea called the linear correlation coefficient that can help us determine whether the model that we create is something that is a reliable model or not. Now I've drawn here four different scatter diagrams of different data sets that have been generated and just to look at what we see from the picture and how that relates to different values that we might get from this linear correlation coefficient. In this first one, our data values that are plotted, as you look from left to right, they rise. And it looks like they have a band width that shows that we could get a linear model that could closely approximate values based on one of the other variables. And so this looks like there is a decent linear correlation that would exist between the two variables. Now, early now, I want to make sure that I um, stress the point that when we say that there's a correlation between variables, we can't say that we necessarily are showing that one variable is affecting the other. It's just that they have a relationship that trends together. So it's not a cause and effect relationship that we're looking for. We're just trying to see if there's a general trend that is happening with them so that we can make a prediction. So here it looks like we have a positive correlation between these variables and then it probably could be fit by a line because when I look and try to place a line so I have about the same number of data values above the line as below the line and they have a pretty consistent bandwidth around them that it looks like I can get a pretty decent linear correlation model between those two variables. The next data set, again, has a positive linear correlation that is visual that we can see from the scatter plot. And these dots are actually much tighter against the line that we could draw. So that has a stronger positive linear correlation between those two variables. In this third scatter plot, the dots are all over the place. There's no correlation between the variables that have been plotted um, with this scatter diagram. And then in our fourth one, we notice that we do have that bandwidth. It looks like they're patterning in a linear model, that a line can be used to model them. But as I look from left to right, my eyes have to go down to follow the cluster of dots. And so that has a negative linear correlation that we'll um, look at. <clears throat> Now there's a correlation coefficient called R, the linear correlation coefficient. That is a measure of how good our linear correlation is between the variables. Now just like we have in the past, when we're talking about a measurement that we take from the sample, we're talking about a statistic. And so when we sample our data values and use that to calculate our linear correlation coefficient, we're looking at the sample statistic, and again, we use our English letter alphabet to denote those. So R, we're going to use for the linear correlation coefficient we get when we're calculating it using sample information. When we're talking about what the population linear correlation would be, if we had the entire population, then that would be the Greek letter rho. And it almost looks like a script DP. So rho would be the population linear correlation coefficient. So again, we use R if it's the sample statistic and Rho if it's the population parameter. Now there are some characteristics about this correlation coefficient. 
r is always a number that's greater than or equal to negative 1 and less than or equal to positive 1. Your r correlation coefficient will always be between negative 1 to positive 1. If you have a data set that the linear correlation, as you look from left to right, your eyes have to go up to follow it, that you have a positive linear correlation, the r value will be positive, so somewhere between 0 and 1. If you have where, as you look from left to right, your eyes have to go down to follow the trend of the data values, then you have a negative linear correlation, and your R values will be between 0 and negative 1. Now, the closer to a positive 1 you are, the more tightly those dots are around the line that would fit in. So this scatter plot would have an R value that's approximately po positive 1 because it looks like those dots almost fit exactly to a line and if I have a set of data values that are collinear that lie exactly on a line then its correlation coefficient will be positive 1 if they trend up and negative 1 if they're um, right on a line and as you look from left to right they go down. This value for our linear correlation coefficient for this scatter plot, it does go up as you look from left to right, and they're fairly tight against what a line would be that would fit through. So this R would be approximately about 0 0.9, roughly. Here, when I have no correlation, or even if it's like that they're curvy, but it's not a linear correlation, this R is about 0. And in this fourth diagram, my dots are fairly well tight band around a line that would fit amongst them. And it's a negative correlation, so this is an R that would probably be about negative 0.93-ish, somewhere in there. And you're just giving a rough estimate for those. Now, as the dots, like I said, are tighter against what a line would be, the closer your value is to positive 1, if the trend is as you look from left to right, the scatter plot goes up, or closer to negative 1, if as you look from left to right, they're closely knit around the line, but the trend goes down. When we have that, we have a high linear correlation. If you have them kind of scattered, it's a low or no linear co correlation. So when we look at this diagram, this is a positive because they're trending up and high because they're fairly tightly knit around a line that would fit through their linear correlation. This would be a negative but high because they're tightly knit linear correlation between those variables. And this would be no linear correlation between them. So that's just an idea of getting a rough estimate of your linear correlation just looking at the scatter plots. Another segment will look at how to get the actual value of R if we're given the specific XY coordinates of the data values that we've collected.